Hello and welcome. Today we'll be looking at perspective drawings in architecture. Now, the term perspective translates to to look to in Latin. So what we do when we sketch perspective drawings is to observe carefully the angle, height and depth of objects and to look through them and, and sketch them as we see them. So perspective drawing is what we call realistic drawings in terms of what we see. In architecture, we have other types of projections. So let me start with this and explain how to have our project perspective sketches. So we look at the first type of projections, the orthographic projections, where you have, let's say, the front view placed, and there is a ground plane, and then we have the top view. The angle of operation in these projections is 90 degrees. The next type of projections we are looking at are with the parallel projections, the parallel projections, where the top view is still vertical, and then uh, the front view is still vertical, and the, the depth of the top view is indicated with parallel projections, depending on the angle. Let's say for oblique projections this way, you could see at the angle of, uh, let's say, 45 degrees or 105 degrees, depending on where you're measuring from. So, in perspective projections, we do not rely on any particular angle. So, the axis of operation in perspective projection, the vertical is still this way, but on the top views or the depth, we see them as vanishing towards the axis of operation, which we would refer to as either our eye level or our horizon line. I will explain that. We can see the relationship between perspective drawings and other projections in architecture. It is with perspective the architects communicate their ideas to their clients at the initial stages. So it's important for us to learn how to sketch in perspective. So I want to explain the basic concepts in perspective, the key concepts in perspective sketches. The first one is the picture plane. So what perspective helps us do is that it helps us to present three-dimensional objects on two-dimensional surfaces. So the surface I'm going on is referred to as the picture plane. This is because this is where everything is going to be presented on. So it's basic that you refer to as a picture plane. Now, there are other planes we work with in perspective. The first one is the ground plane. Now, the ground plane is the plane, is a line you draw somewhere around your perspective that divides the vertical axis from the horizontal axis. So, you can set, let me say, I've set the boundaries of my image this way. And somewhere in between, I can call this the ground level. The main reason I'm referring to this as the ground level and not just the ground plane is because in perspective drawing, you consider this plane as the area in which the feet of the person drawing the perspective is resting on. And then the main axis of projection in perspective drawing is called the horizon line or the eye level. Now, this is where eye level or horizon line. This is where all the projections in the perspective drawing vanish to. And this is where we place what we call vanishing points in perspective. The concept of the horizon line or eye level is the level at which the viewer observes the object. So this is the level with, with which we regulate a lot of things in the perspective. The difference between the horizon level and the ground plane stipulates the height of the observer. Within your perspective projections, you must understand these three concepts. The ground plane, the horizon level or eye level, and then the vertical plane. With this setting, you can go ahead to now create your perspective. So let me just start with something very basic. Let's say, for example, I have something resting on my ground plane, and this is a plane like this. Of those ground plane, the vertical and the vertical axis. I mentioned earlier, perspective drawings do not have a specific angle like other projections. And 
the lines, the angles, all vanish towards the horizon line. But as you can see, um, they are not vanishing towards the whole line. They seem to be converging at a point. And perspective drawings, therefore, is described based on the number of points. So in perspective drawing, we can have one, two, three, or multiple vanishing points. So let's start with one point perspective. So let's start with one point perspective. This is our picture plane, the whole diagram here. So this is our picture plane. Um, you can, you can, we can go ahead and define the edge edge of the picture plane. That, the next one to indicate is our ground plane. For me, it's always good to put your ground plane somewhere a little bit lower, and above your ground plane would somewhere along the middle of the line would also we can also define our eye level. So somewhere in the middle of the sketch we can design define our eye level and our ground plane. So like I said before, the ground plane or the ground level is indicative of the feet of the person sketching while the eye level is indicating of the eye level of the person sketching. And so if I wanted to sketch something in one point perspective, I go ahead and locate the point somewhere on the eye level. And this eye level, like I said, is also referred to as the horizon line. And that is where we place our point. So for one point perspective, we can place it in that one. And let's go ahead and sketch something and see how we represent them in perspective. For something on the ground level here, let me say this is the ground level of the object that I'm sketching. I can have a box this way. And all I need to do Let's say this plane has a depth and I'm standing right in front of it, is to vanish the edges of this line to the point of the perspective and then show, go to this to show the depth. So one point perspective is best when the object you are drawing is parallel to the picture plane. And that's where one point perspective uh, functions at best. Let's just say, for example, this object casts a shadow this way on the ground plane. You remember, everything vanishes off to the vanishing point. I just want to shade this as, let's say, a shadow casted on uh, this object on the ground plane. In sketching perspectives, the distance between the ground plane and the edge of the picture plane can help determine the distance of the of the object, the distance of the observer from the object. The horizon line is also used to control the height of objects in the perspective. So all the objects that are around the height of the eye level of the of the person drawing it will always be exactly on the horizon line, no matter how near or far they are from the perspective. So let me take, for example, this sketch of this human I've sketched here. You can see that from the, though the head of the human is on the horizon level, from the sketch, you can see this human looks bigger and is closer to me. I can sketch another human figure here, and it's still on the, horizon line because everything on the horizon line is at eye level. But standing here, you can see that this person is farther away from me than this person. The same thing with vegetations we place um, in and around the site. So the ones closer to the horizon line can be used to determine the depths of other sketches. Now, for example, I'm already out of my Nature, but if I were to make another sketch of the same tree here, it's going to look something of this sort. And if I was to do the same thing around here, I can use this line to control uh, the depths and somewhere like this to, to control uh, this shading around here. Don't mind me, I'm sketching outside of my picture plane. But the explanation I'm trying to give 
is that uh, the distance between the edge of the picture plane and the ground plane will, will always estimate to the person viewing this image the distance of the person sketching it up, the observer. And then the height between the ground plane and the eye level or the horizon line will give you an idea of the height of the, the, the person making the sketch. So this is the most simplest form of perspective, uh, one point perspective. And it is very useful if the object you are drawing is uh, parallel to the picture plane. What I mean by that is that the vertical and horizontal uh, axis of the object is parallel to the picture plane. They are not placed at an angle to the picture plane. If they are placed at an angle to the picture plane, what you would need to do is to head over to two points perspective. Now, even as this object is here, I can try to sketch a two point perspective in this object. If I, for example, imagine that there is um, an object that sort of is this way at an angle to the horizon line, if I get a line, a vertical line, I can actually run this back to the horizon line and this back to the horizon line and I'll get this shape this way. And if I do the same thing this way and this way, I'm going to have this shape. And if I, if I bring them down this way and this way, I'm going to have uh, this shape. So, this particular box here is at an angle to me, the viewer, standing somewhere around here. And because this, uh, this box is at an angle, I could see two faces of the box, and therefore it's going to vanish to two points in the horizon line. One thing also worthy of note is that you notice I could see two sides and beneath the box. Why? Because this box is above my eye level. So something that is above my eye level, I'm going to see both sides and I'm going to also see below the box. But we're going to talk more about this when we go over to two-point perspective. But for now, uh, here we are with one-point perspective. And uh, thanks for watching. I'll catch you soon. Peace.